Oh my gosh. Have you ever been in such a hurry for something? There's just so many moving parts. You're really excited to do this thing. And it just seems like the checklist is never ending and you can't get out of town fast enough. Well, that is definitely me right now. So I am about to do something I've been looking forward to for almost a year, if not maybe a year really unique fishery that we're about to go explore today i have fished it one time but i fished it from the bank so there's more to it to be explored and what we're targeting today are brook trout we're targeting brook trout in a spring it just pops out of the middle of nowhere in the woods cold water cold groundwater just bubbling up and uh, the area fisheries department has actually stocked it with brook trout since the 1950s. Very small area, some natural reproduction supposedly, but I think it, generally the population is maintained by stocking. I did catch and see brook trout last fall when I went there to check it out. I was grouse hunting and I was grouse hunting in a particular area that was close to this thing and I was like, well, let's kill two birds with one stone and Go check out the spring and so yeah i grouse on my way in there saw a couple birds but yeah i went to the spring there's a dock in the middle of nowhere on this spring crystal crystal clear water sure enough little brook trout sharking around and i caught them and they are very small but i did see bigger brook trout and that's only from the dock this little area there so i brought a sportsman's pdl 120 12 foot kayak drag it in there and see if there's more to it to be explored so been looking forward to this for a long time it's already pretty hot in the summer and I was hoping to get out here earlier but anyway today is a day we're on our way and I am excited and we got a few miles to put under us but we'll get there okay we made it it's Eric's truck little trail to the unknown you can kind of see some water back there but we'll get down there here real quick and uh, explore this thing because like I said I fished it from shore and there's only so much you could actually reach or cast to and there's pools beyond um, where I was able to stand so those things don't get as much pressure that's why we have the kayak today we're going to see if we can get further back into the system and see if there's some ancient forgotten trout back there because this gets annual stocking, but it's spring fed so it doesn't freeze out. The temperature stays inadequate, temperature conducive to keep trout alive, um, but I think also it stays oxygenated enough, <clears throat> oxygenated enough uh, to keep them alive through the winter time. <clears throat> this is not going to be fun to get the kayak back up. Ooh, 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 ooh. It's a long ways down. This is not going to be fun with mosquitoes. Got two rods, actually three rods with me today. I got my four weight St. Croix fly rod and a seven foot light St. Croix. Legend Elite, which is, gosh, one of my favorite rods in the world. And a little thousand size Daiwakage on there. And then I've got a six gill Aether. Um, and this is a five six ultralight with a little Daiwa spinning reel on there. And uh, this is it.
game to help me get back. <laughs> yep, I'll give you a hand. Oh my gosh, we made it. The water is not as clear as it was last fall. But there is bait everywhere in the form of some kind of chub. There are fish rising. Lots of vegetation in here. And so, we'll just have to see. It's pretty early in the day yet. Eric's out here throwing a dry fly. He's been catching some of those chubs. And I'm gonna throw a little bit bigger, flashier bait, as in like a size zero Blue Fox Vibrex spinner, or a little ultralight minnow, which is a rapple jerk jerkbait. Very small jerkbait. It sinks, you can just kind of pop it and let it hang. A little bit bigger profile, like I said. Try to keep the chubs at bay and uh, try to pull the trout out of their little haunts because I think right now they're down in the grass or next to cover. There's a lot of like flooded cedars here. So, yeah, we made it. This is crazy. We'll see what happens. That's right, common shiner or some kind. A little spinner, he's gonna be hard to hold. He's gonna be hard to hold. So that's about <laughs> as big as some of the burp trout are in here, but there's these little fish kind of rising. There's lots of bug life and stuff in here. And there's fish rising, so every time I cast at something that rises, I get just a little chubby hit. See, there's one right there. <laughs> You never know, I mean, these could be little tiny brook trout. I had actually, yep, there we go, brook trout right there. <laughs> little brook trout. <laughs> so you just gotta look and see, dude, this is what I came here for. I don't even care how small it is. Look at that. So they're rising, and you just cast at them and they're viciously, viciously hungry. Little tiny brook trout. Gosh, they're pretty. So like I said, I don't care how big they are. It's just the fact that they live in this thing. Like, what a weird, weird deal. So, little spinner. I might just hang in here and watch for risers, but there's so much more to explore, so we'll work our way back. I'm just gonna kinda explore this thing. I don't know that a whole lot of people will actually put the time in to put a kayak or a canoe in here, but this is, this is a unique experience. This is something different for sure. Love bass fishing, but this is just weird. And I'm cool with weird fishing. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Oh. Sizable fish. Missed my little ultralight minnow right at the boat. I didn't get a real good look at it. It was a bit speckly, so I'm hoping, expecting it was some kind of a trout. We're right up against a beaver dam right here. So this is the main pool of the whole spring. And uh, it just dumps right off the edge and kind of becomes a stream or a small river in itself. So it's much deeper here. And because of that, I'm just gonna keep working this deeper water. Again, it's dark. Maybe this deeper water, I don't know, is better, we will see. But I'm gonna literally troll along this edge. Again, it's a deeper water, and I'm gonna put on something a little flashy, so I got my spinner box out. Got a hold of a, another spinner, just slightly larger, just to create a little bit more vibration, a little bit more flash, and draw fish from a farther distance, especially now knowing that there are fish of good enough size to eat a spinner this big, so. Make a couple passes on that, and then we're hoping that as the sun goes down, there's, you know, the wind dies down, there's more top water rising activity, kind of bringing fish to the, to the top. Pinky. Gotta love that for trout.
Oh, 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 that's big. That is big. That is big. Are you kidding me? Oh my goodness. What is this? It's a freaking big brook trout. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Where's my net? <laughs> oh, 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 oh no. <laughs> no, I can't believe it's real. Oh my gosh, look at that. <laughs> that is not what I expected. I had just, <laughs> what's that? Awesome. Look at that thing. Oh. <laughs> Like I had just, I was just explaining, I, there's this deeper water up against this dam here. I'll get this spinner out and take a look at this fish. And I had a fish swipe at me and miss, and it was quite large. And I'm thinking maybe this is the culprit. Again, these are hatchery fish, so they don't get huge unless they survive the winter. And so Eric and I were really, Hoping maybe one of them survived the winter. Look at that one, Eric. Yeah, that'll do. I'd really like to get, okay. Reel that up to the tip. And uh, let's get away from this beaver dam a little bit. Look at that thing. That's what we came here for, sort of. Not knowing any better. Look at that thing. Whoa, that is legit. That is a legitimately nice brook trout. <laughs> Look at that. That is, I mean, for like a beaver pond spring, how crazy is that? Oh. Look at that, no fin clip. Is this like a natural fish? Oh my goodness, that's just that so crazy. That I love it when a plan comes together. Yeah, boy. Because that fish had missed me, and I was like, I gotta go back through with a little bit bigger spinner, more color, more vibration, and uh, it happened. <laughs> so, this is uh, technically a put and take fishery. Um, DNR stocks this annually, I would guess. And uh, so, we're gonna keep this fish because. Why not, I guess? It's warm water. They're already pretty stressed. And so luckily Eric here has a cooler and... Oh, look at that though. That's a beautiful fish. Isn't that sick? <laughs> That's bigger than any I've caught out of a stream in Minnesota. Oh, that is gonna contaminate the, oh, yeah. the beverages. <laughs> Thanks All right, well, I'm just gonna keep working this edge like that because that was my first pass, basically. Right. Dang, man, I hope there's more like that. That's crazy. That was frantic. It's actually kind of breezy in here. And so I am really loving the fact that I'm in this pedal system kayak right now. Whereas, here's the thing. Again, Eric's down here with me. He brought his little ultralight canoe fantastic for portaging very light it was not easy to get into this thing um, and so a lighter option such as his canoe is a great idea but i have boat control <laughs> again this thing is gonna probably suck to get out of here a little bit but um somewhat worth it to me because i have boat control this wind is kind of blowing me around and i'm able to make casts and steer into it and steer out of it and use the pedal system to hover in one place. Um, and this is some kind of challenging tight quarters type stuff. So bolt control definitely helps. So the beaver dam was at the far end of this body of water. And we think that the spring and the actual cold water is more towards the beginning. It's just like, it just starts kind of out of the middle of nowhere. So that's where you would anticipate maybe the spring being there's also like a bomb hole. There's a bunch of weeds and also just this bomb hole. So that's probably where the spring is. And I think that's where we want to concentrate more of our efforts because the water's just colder there. Coming right out of the ground cold. All the rest of the stuff is kind of murky. Kind of deep, not that trouty. Even though we did catch that very nice one back there. 
<clears throat> anyway, again, we think it might be just a little better up towards the spring, so we're heading back there. Oh, oh, come on. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, I saw this thing swipe at it like three times. Again, we made it back to the more of the spring. Just a little. There you go, nice little guy. Hatchery brookie there on the spinner. Classic. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at how pretty they are in this water. I don't care how big they are. They're beautiful. Beautiful brookies. Beautiful brookies. We're back in the spring and we're really loading up with fish now. I'm going to let that one stay in the water for a little bit while I get my pliers out. It's just shallow grass and all of a sudden these fish just come flying out of the grass. Number zero spinner. Vibrex, something just a little bright. It's kind of rainbow trout colored, silver and pink. I might even pinch my barbs for these guys, but just a pretty little trout. Pretty little trout. <laughs> Like what? They just—they're just crawling. Oh, way out there! This is every cast now. Teeny little brookies, but here we are—a thousand size spinning reel, four pound monofilament, zero size blue fox vibrex, and a light action seven foot Saint Croix rod. Love you. <laughs> oh, I have one just right over the side of the boat. <laughs> <laughs> and you got one on? <laughs> oh, yeah. What is going on? They have really really turned on now every cast doubling up that's my, my spinner was just hanging over the side of the boat oh <laughs> you go oh just a tiny bit better but it's insane just sight fishing basically they just are literally coming out of nothing out of nowhere it's all just like a grass flat. Come here, springy little one. Whew. This is fun. Just plain fun. This is just something real different that you don't get to do every day. Absolutely beautiful. Slide a kayak into a weird unknown place that you heard a rumor about. And the rumor proves to be true. Beautiful. <laughs> 